we need to second Peter chapter 3 verses 11 to 18 second Peter chapter 3 verses 11 to 18 once again thank you Pastor Lori for inviting me to be here it's a great privilege to share the word of God with all of you okay I'm reading in the in the version since everything will be destroyed in this way yeah. what kind of people living. hold you to live? You ought to live holy in God's lives. As you look forward to the day of God and His feet is coming, that they will bring about the destruction of the heavens with fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with His promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, for righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with Him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of his matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the air of the lowest and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Be magnified, be glorified this morning, O oh Lord. Amen. How we want, Lord, to be with you, Lord. Hallelujah. We just want to ask you, Holy Spirit, to be with us, O Lord, as we listen to your word. Hallelujah. Praise speak God. to us, O Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. As I share the word of God, we forget that when it is my soul, O Lord, God, let you know that, O Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The word that we're going to speak for God, we will learn and we're going to apply it, Lord God, in our life, O Lord. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, we are just going to pray for you. God bless you. Reading of his word. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm pastor, pastor. <laughs> but I'm just excited to be here. I'm just excited to share the word of God with you. But we're, while we are worshiping, it's time, it's time to raise more yeah. workers in the Lord. Amen? Amen. So, just a little bit of introduction of chapter 3. Here we see that the Peter deals with the truth of Christ coming in the the whole chapter 3. It deals with Christ coming and the effect of his return to the world. Mm-hmm. You can see here, Peter's picture of the, of the end is very simple only. Fire will destroy the earth and everything on it. And we have the new heaven, we have the new earth, mm-hmm. will stand in the place. So he doesn't show here the exact picture, or, or he doesn't show here if it relates to rapture, Personal coming of Christ, the tribulation, the millennium, the judgment in a new heaven and a new earth. So the reason Peter was willing to say for a simplified picture of this is what was only during the time there were so many false teachers, mm-hmm. they were accusing falsely mm-hmm. the truth of Christ's coming with a miracle of Peter. So they could some, somehow think they were saved but not accountable to God. So Peter was simply trying to rescue during the time the Christians Especially the new convert from the deceived of, of heresy of no return. So, if you happen to read the whole chapter or the second book of Second Peter, the main purpose is to warn Christians about false teachers during that time and to exhort them to grow in their faith and knowledge of Christ. So this morning I'm gonna talk to you about what do we do in a world that someday is going to end. In a world that someday as we face persecution, false teachers, confusion, mm-hmm. evil nowadays, what do we do? And lastly, my last question, what do we do as we wait for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? Okay. We should live ready. Live ready. And that's the title of my message for today. Mm-hmm. Live ready. Everybody say it? Live ready. Live ready. Amen. How should we live ready? 
So number one, we should keep living a holy and godly lives. Mm. So we all know that keep is a verb. It, the meaning of keep is a, it's a verb. Continue doing something without stopping. Mm. So Peter <coughs> is uh, advising uh, Christians here that they should keep living a holy and godly lives. Mm. Verse 11, it says here, Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy in God's lives. So here we can see that Peter is challenging his readers, the Christian there, to live holy in God's lives. Since everything will be destroyed by heavens, everything will be destroyed by heavens by fire, the earth, and everything in it. I know that I believe, and I believe that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have that sanctification process of becoming holy beginning. Right? This means that living a godly life reflects now the character of God in us. Mm -hmm. So although no one could be perfect like God, but we thank God we have the Holy Spirit who dwells in our hearts mm -hmm. and help us glorify God in our lives. Amen. To live holy means to live sin apart for God. It's not for the evil. It's for God. Reserved to give glory to God. The Bible says God is holy and He is calling us to be holy like He is. So whenever we face temptation in our life, it should be our mindset. My man, temptation is not to you. We count ourselves dead to sin, but alive in Christ. Amen. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Amen. Godly life is a life devoted to pleasing God. And if you see, we always aspire to glorify God in whatever we do. It's always being aware of God's presence in our lives and wanting to please Him. And every way, Lord, it is it is you, your will. About my oh, but I am ready to have just again. Holy and godly life does not mean a perfect life mm -hmm. or a sinless life, but rather one that is complete to surrender and to the Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord, I surrender. Ready to be my surrender. Remember that we are not trying to live a holy life and a godly life to earn salvation. It's a natural outgrowth of becoming saved by grace, amen? Mm -hmm. And filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I just remember the song of the men's uh, before. That. Mm -hmm. We have too much love, but the message is very strong. Mm -hmm. It's very... So, uh, I'm Uh, makita at diyan, hmm. tinali ko lang kanila, hindi ba sabi siya? Parang uh, sigari niyo, okay ba sila? So, hindi pa nag-Kristyano, it's not only by ito. Mm -hmm. At ako mati makita nga pa nagbalbaro, hindi ba sabi Amen. Amen. How many times, or how many years we became Christian? Nabalbaliwan ba? Alam ba nabalbaliwan ka na tayo? Mm -hmm. Tatakad kayo mo sila, Pilipinas at Marites? Mm -hmm. For the years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For... At least the chismosa tayo hindi ka. At least we, we are, we become the leader of prayer meeting now. Yeah? We love to pray. So it's also important not to give up when we mess up in life. At yung nagit pagturangan tayo. When we fail in life, we commit mistakes. Ano nga tayo rin tayo. Our reason should be, it's us forgiveness from the Lord. Amen? We confess our sins. Lord, I have sinned against you. Makawano na kuman. And then what happened? We continue moving in our Christian walk. Amen. So, as we live holy in Godly lives, A, eh, we look forward. Hallelujah. Verse 12, it says here, As you look forward to the day of God and speed is coming, that they will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt, melt in the heat. So we should have an attitude. As we look forward, we expect, we hope for His coming. Mm -hmm. Someday Jesus is coming back again. Amen? Amen. So, we should have that attitude of excitement. Oh, someday somehow, my love of Jesus. Are you not excited? Do you want to stay here forever in this world? Mm -hmm. <laughs> On this imperfect world? Mm -hmm. But we should have that excitement. Someday somehow, Hallelujah. Jesus is coming back. Mm -hmm. And it should motivate us to live. Amen. God is coming back. Yes. Jesus is coming back again. So, we look forward. To be with God forever. Amen? We fix now our hope not on this world. 
but to fix our eyes only on Jesus Christ. Amen. Knowing that this world is going to burn, you don't give yourself to the pleasures of this world, mm -hmm. the happiness of this world. Mm -hmm. you know, the pleasures of this world, it only depends on happening. Maybe too much partying, there's drinking, there's, uh, there's smoking. That's the pleasures of the world. But we Christian, I, I know some of the world with fun. I believe that we can have fun also in Jesus as a Christian. Amen? Yeah. Amen. When we worship the Lord, a while ago I believe that we can have fun. Mm. We worship the Lord and raise our hands. Mm. And sang to you. It's more fun to be with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Studying His words this morning, I'm just impressed with our Bible study. It's time for us also to grow in the Word of God, encouraging one another, praying one another. Hallelujah. There is more fun in Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's boring to me to go to the church. It's not boring. Eh? It's exciting. It's fun to meet the Lord, to meet your friends there, to encourage one another. And because we don't know that the day or the hour of the Lord's return, we must be continually ready. Again, we must be continually ready. It says in Second Peter, if you go up, there is uh, chapter 3 verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. So nobody knows. It's a sudden. The day of the Lord is always is also called the day of God's judgment on the earth. The coming of the Lord is also called the day of the Lord. So the coming of the Lord will make the coming of the of will make the day of the Lord. So it is not the day of the devil or Satan. It's the day of the Lord. So this is something that will bring fear or joy. Of course, fear to those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, for us who know Jesus Christ, what a glorious day, that Amen. day. So, as we look forward, let it be, we keep keeping His promise. We need to see. We have to fulfill or be faithful to a promise He has made because He's coming back again. Verse 13, But in keeping with His promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. For righteousness, yes. So, as we keep His promise, He should motivate us also to turn our focus on our eternal home. Amen? Mm -hmm. Then, in this world, the Bible says we are alien, we are strangers of this world, we are headed to a better world, a heavenly home. Amen? Amen. This, Tolandikata, this world is not our home, we are mm -hmm. just passing by. Our home is in heaven, my friend. Amen. There's no more suffering there. Amen. No more sorrow, no more crying, mm. no more pain, no more sickness. Hallelujah. So we do not fear also of our future. Whether we live here or go back to the Philippines, we do not fear of our future. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like the Ivan Padunutan day, we are thinking of that. Maybe if I'm going to old, I'm going to go back to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we have a better world, we have a better home that is in heaven. Amen. This world is not our home, my friend. Mm -hmm. So, it should motivate us to keep on. We hold on to the promise of God. He's coming back again. Hallelujah. For righteousness dwells, of course, to settle down and be at home. It's a permanent home. It's forever, my friend. Forever. How many years we can live on this earth? Maybe 70? 80? Mm -hmm. But in heaven, it's gonna be forever. Amen. Forever and ever and ever. And you can you infinity. It's no end. Are you not happy? There's a home better than this. Yeah. Lord, I got it coming. But no, it's not your time. While you're alive in this world, God has a purpose for you. Amen. Because our hope is in heaven. They should motivate us also that we should store more treasures in heaven, in heaven yeah? than here. Yeah? Yeah. We build more eternity than here. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Sometimes we Christians, our obedience is being tested. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to reading. Mm -hmm. But we should prioritize God first. Amen. And say, Lord, I will not give my thanks to you because I'm building a house in the Philippines. <laughs> Lord, I will not give my time study because I am helping my family in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. But that should not be our 
is God's or the character. We should prioritize God first. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. We help our fellow Christian build a church. Maybe in the Philippines, we know somebody. Okay. We help the poor. We support the plan of the church. Of course, some piece of how you want to be bigger speech than this. Yeah? Mm-hmm. We, usher, we want to usher more souls yes, in the Lord. Next yeah. month. Next oh, next month. month. <laughs> Amen. Looking for uh, light. Reclaim it. Okay. Yes. And let us see. Let us see. Make every effort. Verse 14. It says here. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, in a peace with Him. Make every effort, meaning say, try everything possible to achieve that something. What is that something? To be found spotless, blameless, in a peace with Him. Amen. That should be our characteristic. If Jesus will come, He will find us spotless, meaning mm-hmm. we are pure, we are clean, blameless, innocent, of wrongdoing and without count. And as we believe in God, we have peace in Him. We should not become lazy and complacent. Mm-hmm. Because Christ has not re- returned yet. But again, we should eagerly wait, uh, expect His coming. We should make every effort to live faithfully for Him. We may say, since the earth, brother, is going to burn, maybe I'll relax up my oh, I'm going to relax, I'm going to chill and wait until the coming of Jesus. But the Bible says, it should not be like that. We have to do something. Mm-hmm. We have to do business till He comes. The question is, are we doing something for God? Are we praying the sick? Are we encouraging those who are suffering? Are we attending prayer meeting, Bible studies? So this should not discourage us also, knowing that some days of how the earth is going to burn. Just continue what you're doing. But always include God in your life. The young people continue to excel in school. And we adult continue our, what we're doing here. And we just include God. Amen? So, number two. How should we live uh, holy? Number two, we should keep sharing the gospel. It's very important in the part of a Christian that we should keep sharing the gospel. Something to do with evangelism. evangelism. Verse 15. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. So here is connected to verse 9. If you go up to verse 9, same chapter. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise. As some understand, His slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Amen. So here, in verse 15, Peter commands his readers to consider the Lord's patience as a charge to share the word of God. Mm-hmm. As a charge to keep on reaching the loss. Mm-hmm. We should be diligent to win the loss. Amen. Mm-hmm. The Lord does not want us that we who have been saved. We who God was patiently waiting for, He does not want that. Now we are part of his family to be lazy or we didn't care for any anybody around us whether they are saved, they know Jesus or not. God does not want us to be like that. But we have to do something. We should have a passion also for the Lord's Amen. Amen. We keep sharing the gospel until Jesus will come. The Bible says in Romans one Romans one sixteen, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. Amen. Mm-hmm. We thank God, because His coming has not yet come. Mm-hmm. But we don't know. When? Maybe mm-hmm. later, tomorrow, next year. Again, the Bible says, if you go to First Thessalonians, He will come like a thief in the night. Mm-hmm. So nobody knows. So when there is still time, Let's proclaim the good news to the lost. Amen. Amen. Have a passion for the lost. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, Let us rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. The Bible also says that there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 persons who do not need to repent. Amen. It's a challenge for us then, that we should keep sharing the gospel as a Christian. 
One morning, I, I remember I woke up very early in the morning, <clears throat> and I just felt so hard. Because that time, I, rem I remember my grandfather who died before. Mm. He was in a, I was in elementary that time, and I don't know why I remember that time, one morning, very, very, uh, very early in the morning, and I just remember my grandfather who died before, because I don't know whether he is safe or not, because he has a lot of vices, he smokes, he, he drinks, and I just felt, felt so sorry for him. Mm -hmm. I just felt so angry, they don't, don't know about me, I keep asking God, God is here. So I don't know, maybe somebody shared the word of God to him, in the rush to the hospital, and I'm just praying that that somebody share the word of God to him. Mm -hmm. So it's a challenge for us also. As a Christian, we should pray for our loved ones, eh? mm -hmm. especially our the member of our families, our relatives. I know sometimes it's hard to reach our family, but maybe we can use one another as a group, as a church. We can use one another to reach out to our families. Mm -hmm. Because after that, we cannot return anymore. Amen? So, mm -hmm. have passion for the lost, my friend. Keep sharing the gospel. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And number three, keep growing spiritually. It's very important on the part as a Christian that we should uh, keep growing spiritually. Mm -hmm. Letter A, know God's word. You have to know God's word. Verse 15 to 16 says here, Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him, he writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of his matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable pers people distort as they do to the other scriptures, to their own destruction. So here we see that Peter prays for as a dear old brother, beloved brother, speaking with wisdom given by God. He acknowledges that some of Paul's writing are hard to understand, but it's not impossible to interpret. But regardless, Peter used Paul as a support for his teaching. Peter was not writing about Christians who have a difficult time interpreting the word of God, but rather he was just describing the false teachers at the time, who distort meaning to say the twisted they torture the scriptures. They make them say what they wanted and not what God intended to say. The original meaning was lost. What happens to people who distort the scriptures? The Bible says they do it unto their own destruction. Mm -hmm. The destruction is upon them. So it's very important for us, brothers and sisters in Christ, to know God's word. Amen. When we say, Oh, brothers, I have read already about the Bible from cover to cover. But we should keep on reading. It is our amen, life. Amen. It is our spiritual food, the Bible. We, should, we need to know God's Word so that we will not be deceived by any false teaching around us. Amen. We don't stop only, maybe, brother, so many of you, New Testament. Maybe, brother, still the Old Testament. But we keep on reading the Word of God. I know sometimes if we read the Bible, there are some things that we don't understand it. But if we go on reading the Word of God, I believe that the Holy Spirit will help us understand the meaning of that Word. So we will not stop knowing God's Word. Amen? Mm -hmm. We study, we meditate, and of course we obey it. But ako mga apply tayo, we can apply in our life what we are reading. Let us be. Be on guard. As we grow spiritually, be on guard. Verse 7 then. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position. So here we see that Peter warns readers that they had to be on your guard or beware meaning to say be constantly guarding yourself. They had to be alert so that they may not be carried away by the error of the lawless or that false teachers during that time and fall from their secure position of Jesus. So we should be alert nowadays. We should be alert 
always ready to respond to any attack of the enemy. Amen? As, as a church, we, can, we should learn to protect our church. Maybe from, from any gossip. I know we Filipinos always want to talk, yeah? We, we help one another. We should learn how to protect our church. Amen? Amen. We cover our pastors. They are humans too. We cover our pastors with prayers. You know? We help each other. We work together as a church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's very important. Verse 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So, again, Peter warns readers to avoid the mystics of these wicked teachers by growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To grow in grace, meaning to say, we have that greater understanding of God's holiness, God's justice, God's sovereignty, God's lordship in our life. We do not see more and more how unworthy we are. Hallelujah. But we see more and more how His how His undeserved favor, His love that He gave to us. Mm-hmm. To grow in the knowledge of Jesus is by having an intimate relationship. Hallelujah. Because the more we know Him, the more Jesus we see in our life. Mm-hmm. Of course, how do we know more God? Of course, through His Word. Keep praying. Hallelujah. So I believe that as we keep on growing. I believe we will not stop knowing the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. We love to attend Sunday school. Mm-hmm. It's the first time that I, te- I attend, attended Sunday school this in morning. Canada. It's good. In Canada. In Canada? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I've been challenged. You have a good learning. <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll, we'll never stop attending prayer meetings as we go. Amen? Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. We love to attend prayer, prayer meetings. I know some. Sometimes it's hard to attend prayer meetings. But as we grow, we love. Amen? Amen. We are the worship team here. Mm-hmm. You love to attend. You should love to attend prayer meeting too. Mm-hmm. Bible studies. Yeah. We obey God's word. That's what I have said. We give our thanks. I know your church is very strong in giving thanks. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Because we love the Lord. We acknowledge Him as yes. our provider. We just give our thanks. We submit to our pastor, our pastor seven. Mm-hmm. We submit to our leaders, deacons of our church. We involve ourselves, uh, ourselves in the church. Amen. Mm-hmm. We do not isolate ourselves, but we involve ourselves. Mm-hmm. We learn to forgive each other. Mm-hmm. Amen. We learn to love each other. I know sometimes as a Christian, we love each other, but we should learn to forgive mm-hmm. and continue loving each other. Amen. We husband, we become nice to you. Our wife, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, my wife, you become nice to us. We <laughs> 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 become nice to our children, right? <laughs> we guide, we teach our, our children, of course, young people, you respect, you bear your parents, amen? Yeah. So, what's the result of spiritual growth? Spiritual growth. Mm-hmm. It says here in the last part of verse 18. It always brings glory to God. Amen. Amen. So, I believe that as as we wait for Christ's return, we must not sit. We must not sit and wait for Christ to return. Amen. But we should realize that time shall, and we have important work to do. Amen. We have to do something for God's kingdom. As we wait for maybe rapture, when it's coming. Maybe 1,000 more years. <laughs> it is a reminder, reminder. What's that? It's a reminder also to us, as we wait for the coming of the Lord. We have also an expiration date on this earth. Eh? Mm-hmm. And at least, as we live ready, yes, Lord. It's a challenge for us to live ready as if it is our last day on earth. Mm-hmm. Amen. So mm-hmm. number one again. We have to keep living a holy and godly lives. Number two, keep sharing the gospel. And number three, keep growing spiritually. I know that your church is growing also because you're a pastor. I just watched in the news. You have recognized one pastor, uh, Percy. 
and don't know somebody somehow we can we can start church also in Airdrie. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we declare. Yeah. Your church is growing yeah. every day, yeah. Yeah. and your pastor, pastor, she's willing also to share the pocket for the development of others. You are opening the doors for more workers in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, again, the opportunity of Padayawan, we should live ready in our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I think that the church here is only, and I don't know what's the plan. They give to Pastor Andrew.